We all love a nice bar of soap and handmade is of course always the best choice. Soap making isn't as difficult as it may seem and it is important to understand some basics. Cold process soap is made by combining oils and sodium hydroxide, also called lye, which causes a chemical reaction called saponification. In the process you get to choose the oils, scents, colorants and any other ingredient. Let's have a look at the essentials that are needed for your soap making. The main ingredient is sodium hydroxide or lye. And you cannot make any soap without it because it is the ingredient that turns fats and oils into soap. You can find the sodium hydroxide or lye in its pure form in the cleaning aisle since it is also very handy for clearing up clogged drains. Check the ingredient label on the back to make sure that it is 100% sodium hydroxide. We need to dissolve the sodium hydroxide in a liquid, usually water, and we want to use distilled water for the soap making. In distilled water the minerals and metals, as well as any other impurities, have been removed. That way you aren't adding anything that could possibly cause any problems in your soap, because trace amounts of metals in the water may taint the quality of your soap. For the other part of the soap you need a fat or an oil that the lye will turn into soap. There are many recipes in the internet that you can use, recipes using a combination of different oils or in some cases soaps that use just one oil like olive oil or coconut oil. You need a vegetable oil or an animal fat to make soap. Use a soap calculator to determine how much water and lye you need in proportion to the oil or oils. Brambleberry has an online lye calculator that is very easy to use. They also have the smartphone application that you can download so you can calculate or rebatch a recipe on the go. Once the lye solution and the oils are measured out and ready, they need to be combined and reach an emulsion. You need a stick blender to accomplish this, as hand whisking will take way too long. Always use safety goggles when soaping to protect your eyes. Always wear gloves when dealing with fresh soap. Wear long sleeves, long pants and closed-toed shoes. A common mistake in soap making is the inexact measurement of ingredients. Unlike cooking, in soap making the measurements need to be very precise and you need a scale to weigh out your ingredients. Best is to use grams for very exact measurements. If you're using hard oils in your soap, like shea butter, palm or coconut oil, you need to melt down the butters. I like to use a double boiler because it is a gentle heating method, but you could of course also use a microwave. Another essential tool is a thermometer. It is needed because the oils and the lye solution need to be about the same temperature when combined. An infrared thermometer is handy because it doesn't come in contact with the ingredients and it has both temperature units Celsius and Fahrenheit. You will also need a container to mix your soap in. Make sure you use sturdy plastic containers for this purpose. It is usually labeled on the bottom with PP number 5. Choose the size of your container according to the batch size that you will be making. Glass is not recommended. However, glass is the best material to store your fragrance or essential oils. Undiluted fragrance or essential oils can deteriorate some plastic containers. To avoid this, always measure out and store fragrance and essential oils in glass containers. Fragrance oils or essential oils are used to scent your handmade soap, if you wish to do so. There are many possibilities and fragrance variations. It really depends on your personal preference. Make sure your fragrance oils are suitable for soap making and check out the label for usage rates in soap. 
Once your soap is at the desired consistency, you want to pour it in a container to saponify. There are molds especially designed for soap making, some made of silicon, some made of wood with a silicon liner inside, but you don't need a specific soap mold. You could use a regular Tupperware container and line it with freezer paper. Or use muffin trays, the regular ones you find at the supermarket. Never use aluminum or metal as it reacts badly to the lye. The following items are nice to have once you have everything listed out so far. Sodium lactate hardens cold process soap so you can unmold it and enjoy it more quickly. Therefore, it is of great help. You can just add some to your lye solution before mixing it with your oils. Silicon spatulas are great for mixing and scraping out your soap. I like the ones that are in one piece so you don't risk to lose a part when making soap. They are very affordable and you can find them at the supermarket. Colorant is optional but great if you want to make colored soap or multicolored designs. Micas are very practical because they can be added to the batter directly without pre-mixing. There are also pigments and liquid colorants as a possibility. If you are starting out and you are soaping on a budget, you could start with the three primary colors, red, blue and yellow, and use these to mix up other colors. You get purple by mixing blue and red, green by mixing blue and yellow, and orange by mixing red and yellow. These are the secondary colors. If you add black and white colorant to your initial stock, use those to make the colors brighter or darker. A good one-time investment is a soap cutter, if you want a straight, smooth and uniform cut for every single soap. There are single wire cutters or multi-bar cutters and both are a good option depending on what type of soap that you are making. One might be a better version than the other one to start out. You will find a link down in the description box for all these tools, equipment and ingredients. And if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to know more about soap making and skincare DIY and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I see you soon and in the meantime, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye bye!